challenged by Ross Weston's uh, sermons, and we were much encouraged and impressed by the flourishing school of religion. UCA then had more than 700 members, and nearly that many children in the RE program. Reed Paul was bulging at the seams. That fall, the church acquired additional land, which increased its footprint to four acres and the congregation approved the plans of architect Charles Goodwin uh, to build the sanctuary where we worship in 2011. Let this be our pledge that we will rise to this challenge and this great legacy. It's our turn. I'm your consultant. 
Publishing Minister, Carlton Elliott Smith, and it's great to be here with you all this morning. I have with me here Yakamina Direct, who is a former chair of the board for UUCA, and Natty Averett, who's the current board chair, and we're going to share with you a bit about the sanctuary. Now, one of the things I love about our sanctuary is how the light plays in the room, especially during the early service. That was part of the design of the building. Those remarkable windows that go all around the building are called the clear story windows. They are above eye level, that is, unless you are in the balcony, in the choir lot there, and they let abundant light into the space. When I'm standing there on Sunday morning and I feel that light moving across my face, it's just so inspiring. It feels like a little kiss from heaven, actually. Now, it was late in the 1950s and the early 1960s, as you heard, and there were so many children in the RE program that there was need for additional space, that we needed to expand, we needed another worship space. And as was mentioned, the architect Charles Goodman, who was well known for his modern designs, was hired to be the architect for our new building. He studied the sermons of, that had been preached at the Unitarian Church of Arlington and looked at the grounds and looked at their regular shape and tried to figure out a design that would reflect our beliefs and our way of thinking as Unitarians uh, at the time, not even Unitarian Universalists quite. He came up with a design with a classic temple form, one where many forms of religious interest could be expressed, including our respect for nature and our commitment to working together so that the world will be a better place. The sanctuary is square, different from a lot of other worship spaces that have a more rectangular form. This means that more people are close to the main action that happens in the pulpit and on the platform. The acoustics were a challenge then, and they still continue to be now, because there's sound that comes in from the outside of the building. You can hear the traffic, as well as there's a bit of unevenness uh, with the sound on the inside. But this is a time for renewal, and one of the things that will be worked on in this renewal capital campaign is to improve the sound and update the windows in the sanctuary. However, our forebears at the time did not want to call the space a sanctuary. We have a strong humanist perspective in our congregation, and that was the case then also. So they wanted to call it what? Auditorium. An auditorium, right on, sister? <laughs> However, when they saw how well the space turned out, they said, hmm, maybe it is a sanctuary after all. I first saw the building when I was planning our wedding in 1980. My husband's mother, a long time Episcopalian out of one of these traditional churches with a steeple, said, it's a very beautiful building, but a church it isn't. <laughs> On my first visit to the church, like a lot of people, I missed the building multiple times. When I finally eyed the church sign, I thought, is this really the church? Then I saw the gay pride flag, the telltale sign that this was not an inconspicuous extension of the diplomatic training center across the street. <laughs> As we consider changes, we strive to maintain the building features that are unique, that are greatly appreciated and that have served us well while improving and adding to these features. This year I had many opportunities through the work that I've been doing throughout the church to see all the different ways the place is used and also to have lots of different conversations, including conversations with Virginia where I was able to discover that one of the things I really love about her is her quick wit and her surprisingly edgy sense of humor. When Goodman started working with UUCA, he asked what people felt when they came to the church. What were their goals and hopes? What the congregation meant to them? The true value of our physical space comes from the environment and experience it provides to the community. Our physical space creates the environment where all the different people you see in this room can be together at the same time and do art and talk about justice and talk theoretically and talk about post articles and all the different beliefs about religion. It is that space that we are trying to create and improve. And indeed, our church is situated in the larger world in which we live. So we're gonna rise in body and spirit now and join in singing one of my favorite hymns, and maybe one of yours too. It's Blue Boat Home, the words are in your order of service. But you know what? We're gonna rock a little bit just to get this thing started off. You know, because you how many of you ever been on a boat, like a yacht or like a little tugboat? That's a little uneven. 
So we're just going to rock a little bit. Just like this. this community does and will have to do to an even greater extent as it renews its meaning and purpose is to focus on the outreach. That's what a community of faith 
does throughout the week. Not just talk on Sunday, but work throughout the week for a better world. But knowing that here on earth, God's work must truly be our own. That is defining of what the UUCA community is all about. And that's why I appreciate all of you being here this morning. The history of the church is one of participating in the larger community, of challenging and supporting and participating. Challenging when we stood up to the racial segregation of the birth machine, you heard earlier, of fighting for a three to two vote to get Culpeper Garden, three to two vote on the county board for Culpeper Garden, a senior affordable living facility, for caring of the, in the flesh for our friends in Guatemala, Beacon House, or Buckingham Village, right next door, and of standing on the side of love and against the unjust so-called marriage amendment in this commonwealth. So I guess I'd end by saying it's not always easy to be either a Unitarian or an Arlingtonian. <laughs> we actually set very high standards and expectations for ourselves. It's not a laid-back religion, and it's not a laid-back community that asks very little of us. But it is an opportunity to find meaning in our lives with great rewards and great results. So, this community is bold. It has made a difference from day one. Democracy, I don't feel, works if you stay at home. People in this church don't stay at home. As Gandhi said, be the change you want to be in the world. And I think all of you do that every day.